Welcome to Bedhampton Church. Contact us at www.bedhampton.church. But for now, let's continue that journey with this input. Death is nothing but a journey. If, like me or Jill or Peter, you find yourself at a lot of funerals, that is the story that you will be told from the poems that are trotted out at funerals. Or if you happen to have been the head of state, it's a similar reflection you'll see with a cartoon of Paddington Bear. Death is nothing but a journey. It doesn't matter, they've just slipped into a room next door. And there is, of course, a grain of truth in that. Uh, there are, often are um, uh, in falsehoods. I mean, we hear at the beginning of the Gospel of John, I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. We do profess that hope, don't we? That, a hope of God's kingdom to come. However, to say that death is nothing at all belies the whole truth. It denies the impact of someone we love or someone that we greatly respect dying. Death is very much something. God himself wept as he overlooked and saw some mourners. We read at the death of Lazarus in the Gospel of John again, um, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. And then the gospel continues. Jesus wept. The impact of Jesus seeing mourners, mourning the loss of a loved one, made God cry. So my friends, let us do away with the lie that just because we are apprentices to Jesus, just because we are Christians and have hope that death means nothing to us. So with that truth in mind, what is a response that we might have to the loss of our Queen? And I say a response because we'll all have different responses, won't we? And actually... The response that we would have for the love of our for the loss of our queen, even though we have great respect for her, is very different to the response that we would have for the loss of a loved one. On Friday, you may have seen His Majesty King Charles III, in his first address to the nation, respond to the death of his loved one. The king listed the attributes of his mother and her life. He then reflected on the road ahead and the responsibilities he was going to take up. He spoke of his family and the support he would give them and they would give him. And then towards the end, he concluded by saying, in our sorrow, let us remember and draw strength from the light of her example, as he referred to his mother. So with that in mind, let's look at one possible response to the loss of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. As we reflect upon a life that was lived worthy of the God that she worshipped. I'll share a couple of reflections that came to me in my prayer. And the first one, actually, King Charles mentioned on Friday as well. And it was her dependence upon God. One of the areas of the Queen's life that was obvious from the very beginning was that she depended upon God for direction and support. In that... uh, First, 21st birthday radio address in 1947, she completed it by saying, God help me to make my vow, good my vow, and God bless all of you who are willing to share it. Setting out her stall from the very beginning that she depended upon God. But it wasn't just a one-off time that she said such things. In 1981, perhaps not fully understanding what the next few years would hold for her, she said this, Christ not only revealed to us the truth in his teachings, he lived by what he believed and gave us the strength to try and do the same. 
And then a couple of years ago when we were celebrating our Queen, you may have seen a book called The Servant Queen. She wrote a foreword in that. I have been and remain very grateful to you for your prayers and to God for his steadfast love. I have indeed seen his faithfulness. That faithfulness we were singing of only earlier on, um, which I didn't quite realise we were going to. So. But the Queen depended upon God and he delivered. She depended upon God for strength. And it just reflects to me um, that gospel that Jill read. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. She knew that to be true. She depended upon God. The light that shined out of her was because, because she depended on the Holy Spirit. So the Queen was dependent upon God, but she was also devoted to a life of service. And again, we've heard that already this morning. I'm not saying anything you haven't already reflected on this morning. A life of service to others. In 1980, in difficult times, we may be tempted to find excuses for self-indulgence and to wash our hands of responsibility. She says Christmas, which is when it was happening, stands for the opposite. We need to go out and look for opportunities to help those less fortunate than ourselves, even if that service demands sacrifice. Jesus speaks of being devoted as a servant king to us in all of the Gospels. Coming not to be served, but to serve. And that was something that our Queen emulated. In fact, Jesus speaks of this in Luke. He says, a dispute, or it says, a dispute also arose amongst them, this is the disciples, to which one of them, which one of them were considered to be the greatest. It's weird, isn't it? If you're in any group of blokes, they're all trying to work out who's the one who's the greatest, aren't they? The disciples were no different. Jesus said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But if you are not to, you are not to be like that, that's a pretty straightforward command, isn't it? you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be the, the youngest, and the one who rules rules like the one who serves for who is greater the one who's at the table or the one who serves it's not the one who's at the table but I am among you as one who serves perhaps our queen's greatest gift to us and the world was her example of her devotion to service to service of others a devotion of service from the servant queen that she took straight from the servant king king Jesus She depended upon God, his spirit. She was devoted to service. And then finally, the the last thing that came to mind in my prayers was her way of declaring the love of God. She declared God's love in all that she did. And in 2011, we read about this. Although we are capable of great acts of kindness... History teaches us that we sometimes need saving from ourselves, from our recklessness, our greed. God sent into the world a unique person, neither a philosopher or a general, important though they are, but a saviour with the power to forgive. Let's get this right. Queen Elizabeth II lived in a politically charged world. She did a politically charged role. She was head of our nation and many others. She was a diplomat as well. And she mixed with many people of faith. Many different faiths. She was respectful of all people. But she did not swerve from the declaration that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life it was obvious to all wasn't it especially at Christmas she would focus in on this 2013's Christmas message she says this the Christmas message shows us that this love is for everyone 
There is no one beyond its reach. No one beyond the love of God. She declared that out loud. Declaring that the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross was for anyone who would turn to him. And she was just continuing on from the previous year because in the previous year she'd been reflecting on the carol in the bleak midwinter. What can I give him, she said, poor as I am. If I were a shepherd, I'd bring him a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. What can I give him? And then she declared the response, the response of turning to Jesus when she said, this carol gives the answer. Yet what can I give him? I give him my heart. Queen Elizabeth II's declaration of the gospel was throughout the whole of her life. If anything, as she got older, it got bolder, didn't it? It was a characteristic of who she was. The Queen's light shone out, as her son said, through dependence upon God, for a devotion to service of others, and a declaration of God's love. But of course, words of dependence and devotion and declaration don't mean anything if that doesn't go on behind the scenes. But the truth is, her very actions spoke of the same love, of the same love of God. And I don't know if you saw the king's uh, address to the nation the other day. I don't think I've ever seen him speak quite so personally to us. And I don't think I've ever seen him speak of faith quite in the same way. He said, didn't he, as he reflected on the church, the church in which my own faith, the king said, is so deeply rooted. What's been going on there? What has the queen done with her son there? And and then he goes on, didn't he? In that faith and the values it inspires, I have been brought up to cherish a sense of duty to others. my friends I want to tell you that death is definitely something don't listen to anyone that tells you any different the death of Jesus on the cross means for us that there is a hope beyond the here and now for all those who would call him Lord the death of a life well lived is very much worth something the death of our queen as a light points towards Jesus. So what is our response to the Queen and her death? I'm sure there are many. But I take the King's words as perhaps one of the best responses. Let us decide today, in fact join me in today, in deciding that we will depend upon God. That we will devote ourselves to the service of others, just like we say we will. And also that we will declare his love in words and actions. Amen. You have been listening to Bedhampton Church. Our prayer is that this helps you journey with Jesus and serve your community by sharing God's love and friendship. Subscribe and join us for more discussion at www.bedhampton.church. All material creative commons copyright. Contact us for more details.